Yesu ndiyo alikuja kuintroduce for the first time mfalme anayetumikia mfalme anayetumikia sio mfalme anayetumikiwa being a servant demands that you deny your rights to be pampered that you deny your rights to be comforted Jesus alikuwa ame blend into the community ame disappear into them because he came to lift them up and he had to do it from below alikuja kuwainua kwa hiyo inabidi aje katika hali yao alizaliwa na mwanamke chini ya sheria biblia inasema apate kuwakomboa wale walio huko katika sheria kwa hiyo Yesu he was always different because he was a servant nataka nizungumze kuhusu serving one another au being a servant au kuwa mtumishi uh, katika namna tumelelewa katika makanisa ukisikia mtu ni mtumishi mara nyingi labda ni mchungaji au labda mwinjilisti au apostle bishop whatever ni yule mtu ambaye anaonekana kana kwamba anafanya kile kitu tunaita full time ministry tunasema huyu ni mtumishi lakini katika ndoto alizokuwa nazo Kristo alivyokuwa anatuokoa anatununua kwa damu yake tuweze kuishi kwa ajili ya Mungu na tuweze kumtumikia Mungu it was every one of us ilikuwa ni kila mmoja ambaye anaamini unaitwa katika utumishi na unaitwa katika utumishi permanent wa namna mbili kutumikia watu na kumtumikia Mungu at the same time. Haleluya. Kutumikia watu na kutumikia Mungu at the same time. Hata Yesu alikuwa anamuita servant king. Mtumishi mfalme. Mtumishi mfalme and it was a new concept Pastor Dennis. Kwa sababu you were you were either a servant or a king but never together. You were either a king or a priest but never the two together. Siko mnanielewa. Kwa hiyo Yesu ndiyo alikuja kuintroduce for the first time mfalme anayetumikia. Mfalme anayetumikia sio mfalme anayetumikiwa. Lakini for some reason kutokana na makuzi ya kidini na dini wakati inakuwa in the middle in the dark ages pale katikati kutaka kuiga the way dunia inafanya kazi na watu wanavyooperate katika elimu zao za diploma bachelor masters phd na whatever ikaanza kutengeneza false hierarchy false hierarchies au ngazi ambazo sio za kweli ngazi ambazo kristo hakuziacha ambazo zikaanza kutengeneza matabaka fake katika kanisa zikaanza kutengeneza matabaka ya watwana na mabwana katika kanisa ambayo haikuwepo katika mind ya ya, ya Kristo ndio maana mitume wote ambao walikuwa wamewaacha they were servants walikuwa ni watu ambao ukitokea huwezi kuona difference kubwa kati yao na wale watu waliokuepo exactly this is how Jesus was mzemushi eh ndivyo hata Yesu alivyokuwa hata Yuda alipomsaliti Yesu akaenda kuchukua maaskari wa hekaluni kuja kumkamata Yesu Yesu angekaa katulia tu wasingeenda na Yuda wasingejua yupi ni Yesu I want you to think about that for a moment Isaya katika kumtabiri Yesu anasema hakuwa na uzuri wowote hata tumtamani Jesus was not handsome He was not a cut above the enemy kama mnyie mkienda pale yule kijana ambaye analipa kuliko wote ndo mkamate huyo. Yule mwenye nguo the most expensive ndo mkamate huyo. Yule ambaye mnaona watu wote wanamtumikia ndo mkamate huyo. Ilibidi Yuda anaye mfahamu aende. Ambusu ili watu waweze kujua kwamba wa kumkamata ndio huyu he was so ordinary because he came to serve 
It's different these days. Ukitokea kwenye kanisa yani aliye mchungaji utamjua tu. Aliye apostle utamjua tu. Aliye nabii utamjua tu. Kwa maana nabii it's easy kuwatambua viatu vyao vinang'aa vimechongoka. Unajua tu prophet. But Jesus alikuwa ame blend into the community, ame disappear into them. Because he came to lift them up. And he had to do it from below. Alikuja kuwainua, kwa hiyo ilibidi aje katika hali yao. Alizaliwa na mwanamke chini ya sheria, Biblia inasema, apate kuwakomboa wale walioko katika sheria. Kwa hiyo Yesu he was always different because he was a servant. Being a servant demands that you deny your rights to be pampered. That you deny your rights to be comforted. Kuwa mtumishi. Kuna neno nitalisoma hapa. Nimeshangaa sana kwa nini Yesu atoe mfano kama huu. Nimeshangaa lakini nitalisoma baadaye kidogo Kwa sasa tuangalie kwenye Marko 10 mstari wa 43 Sijajua kama kuna msomaji amepewa microphone Yes Marko 10 42 sorry mpaka 45 Yesu akawaita akawaambia Mwajua ya kuwa wale wanaohesabiwa kuwa wakuu wa mataifa hutawala kwa nguvu na wakubwa wao huwatumikisha lakini haitakuwa hivyo kwenu bali mtu anayetaka kuwa mkubwa kwenu atakuwa mtumishi wenu na mtu anayetaka kuwa wa kwanza wenu atakuwa mtumwa wa wote kwa maana mwana wa Adamu naye hakuja kutumikiwa bali kutumika na kutoa nafsi yake iwe fidia ya wengi amen haleluya ninayependa sana haya maneno Anasema mstari wa 43 lakini haitakuwa hivyo kwenu bali mtu anayetaka kuwa mkubwa kwenu atakuwa mtumishi wenu this is counterintuitive iko kinyume na intuition ya kawaida iko kinyume na mafikirio ya kawaida kwenye political system ukitaka kuwa kiongozi wa watu unataka uwe mkubwa wao si ndio Ukitaka kuwa kiongozi wa watu unataka uwe mkubwa wao wa kupisha njia upite na vingora katika namna kama hiyo because you are lord over them unawatumikisha wale walioko chini anasa but in the kingdom it will be opposite if you will, if you want to be great in the kingdom be a servant of all kama ukitaka kuwa mkuu katika ufalme ni lazima uwe mtumishi wa wote this is how jesus came kuna watu wanafunzi ambao yesu alikuwa nao they were more impressive than him hasa angalia sauli sauli ambaye baadaye alikuja kuwa paulo alikuwa ni intellectual ni msomi ni figa ambayo ina, inakuwa well respected katika israeli kwa sababu alikuwa amesoma katika the most prestigious university of the time chini ya Gamaliel alikuwa anaheshimika kweli kweli huyo ni Paulo kokote alikotokea watu walikuwa wanakimbia kwa sababu alikuwa ana mamlaka anakamata watu anaweka ndani anakamata watu wanauawa anakamata watu anafanya hivi he was prominent but look at him anasema yale yote yaliyokuwa faida kwangu Nimeyahesabu kuwa kama mavi ukifananisha na faida ya kumjua yeye Kristo. So everything that he had before, every privilege that he had as a Pharisee was shed from him. Fursa zote alizokuwa nazo zikatoka kwake. Akampokea Kristo ndani. And this guy became so humble mpaka anazungumza hazungumzi kama alivyokuwa akizungumza kwa Wafilipi kwamba kwa haki ipatikanayo katika Torati nilikuwa faultless this time anazungumza kwamba ninajivunia madhaifu yangu i am the chief of all sinners this time unamuona ni mtu ambaye yuko tofauti mpaka wa Korinto wakauliza 
mtu huyu ndio yule ambaye baada ya Paulo kwenda kwao wakauliza mtu huyu ndio yule ambaye alikuwa anatuandikia zile barua barua zake zilionekana kana kwamba ni nzito lakini yeye mwenyewe akatumia neno he is unimpressive yani unamwangalia mtu you are like huyu ndio yule walikuwa wanamzungumzia yani nchi nzima anaye trend ni huyu au kuna mwingine Hilo swali na Yesu aliulizwa na Yohana mbatizaji mkamuulize yule Yesu ni yeye au tungoje mwingine yani mbona tuoni mashamra shamra did i baptize the wrong one yewezekana he made a mistake nimembaptize mtu ambaye sio yani hatuoni shangwe za kimasihi masihi Hatuoni amsha amsha what's wrong Walidhani this king anakuja kama kina Herode walivyokuja with a silver spoon in his mouth Walidhani he anakuja with riches Walidhani anakuja kuua Warumi Walikuwa hawajategemea mfalme atazaliwa kwenye hori ya kulishia ngombe with donkeys as witnesses Punda tu ndio wanaoshuhudia walidhani kina Herode watakuja watasaluti watafanya hiki na kile lakini he came different mpaka Pilato anamuuliza are you the king of the Jews are you the one we are confused we are told kwamba wewe ni mfalme but look at this alikuja kuvunja the norm about being a leader about being a servant in the kingdom you can never lead in the kingdom until you've learned to serve na ngoja nikwambie huwezi kupewa maono ya kwako mpaka kwanza Mungu amejiridhisha kwamba umeweza kutumikia maono ya mtu mwingine leadership in the kingdom does not come from the air It is groomed. Inatengenezwa kwa mtu kujinyenyekeza na kutumikia maono mengine ya Mungu. Unayatumikia until it is your time. Then the Father says, "Grace, it's time." Umetumikia haya maono pa kuto, ya kut, ya kutosha. Now I want you to do ABC. Haleluya. Anayetaka kuwa mkubwa kwenu, Yesu anasema. <clears throat> Lazima awe mdogo wote mm. na anayetaka kuwa wa kwanza atakuwa mtumwa wa wote mtumwa mtumwa huwa anaambiwa asante eh oh nimekuwa nikihudumu kwenye ili kanisa Nimekuwa niki lakini watu hawa appreciate gift yangu. Kuna watu wameondoka unajua kwenye ili kanisa kwa sababu gift zao haziwi appreciated. Hasa unaotaka wa ku appreciate nao ni watoto wa huyo huyo. Wote wanamtumi kama wote tunamtumikia mmoja kwa nini watumishi wenzio wa kushukuru kwa wewe kufanya utumishi wako kwa huyo bwana wetu wote? Kwa nini usisubiri tu kushukuru yeye? I'm, I'm confused. Brother unafanya kazi CRDB. Wafanya kazi wenzio ambao mko cheo kimoja. Ghafla wakianza kuzira kesho waji kazini kwamba yani jana nimefanya kazi pale pale CRDB nimefanya kazi sisi hajanishukuru. Hajaniambia kabisa afu you are both managers. Yaani manager tu mwingine aanze kukuenga. Hapa si RDB hakuna shukurani. Tunafanya kazi mpaka saa moja sisi asemi chochote. Lakini na wewe una bosi huyo huyo mmoja. Lakini wanaanza kudai shukurani kutoka kwako. Utawaelewaje? Na kanisa vile vile ni hospitali. Wote tuko hapa kwa sababu tulikuwa wagonjwa wa dhambi tukawa wagonjwa wa vitabia fulani ambavyo viko sugu vimegoma kutoka wagonjwa tunakuja kila kila siku hapa kusikia neno linatutoa kwenye katabia kamoja 
na kutoa kwenye katabia yake nyingine lakini tumeokoka tumekubaliwa lakini unaanza kukuta mgonjwa mmoja analalamika wagonjwa wengine sawa mimi na malaria lakini mbona huyu anakohoa wote mko wadini wanaita nini ile wanaita wadi gani mwaisela wote mko mwaisela eh kipindi kile umepata shida ya mguu wambe kufunga mguu ameuninginiza hivi wewe unaanza kusema sawa angalau mimi nimeninginizwa mguu mbona yule amemninginiza mkono mambo gani haya alikuwa anafanya nini mpaka avunjike mkono You know it's what we do. Nyie wote wagonjwa, tulia dawa iingie. Usimwekewa drip wekaa kimya. Itaisha tu. Wenzio hujui wanaumwa nini, hujui nini kimewaleta hapa. Haleluya. Hebu tufungue katika Luka 17. Luka 17 ni somee mstari wa saba mpaka wa kumi. Lakini ni nani kwenu mwenye mtumwa alimaye au achungaye ngombe atakayemwambia mara arudipo kutoka shambani njoo upesi keti ule chakula? Je, hata mwambie nifanyie tayari chakula ni ile jifunge unitumikie hata niishe kula na kunywa ndipo nawe utakapokula na kunywa? Uh mstari wa kumi. Je, yeah, atampa asante yule mtumwa kwa sababu ameyafanya aliyoagizwa? Vivyo hivyo nanyi mtakapokusha kuyafanya yote mlioagizwa, semeni sisi tu watumwa wasio na faida. Tumefanya tu yaliyotupasa kufanya. Hivi hiyo imeeleweka. Huyu ni anaongea ni Yesu. Kwamba hivi nyie ni nani kati yetu? Kwa sababu kipindi kile kuwa na mtumwa was nomo. Na mtumwa kumbuka alikuwa ni mtu ambaye hana mshahara. Hana mshahara kabisa. Mtumwa yeye alikuwa anapewa pa kulala tu. A slave was never paid anything. Because he is property. You do not pay property. You own property. Ndio maana na wao walikuwa wanauzwa na kununuliwa. Tuko pamoja. Sasa Yesu anauliza according to the culture waliokuwa nao ni nani kati yenu ambaye anamtumwa? Ambaye yule mtumwa akitoka shambani unakuja unamwambia kaa chini ule. Eh? Kaa baba ule. We ni mtumwa wangu umefanya kazi kaa ule. Akitoka shambani anasema si uta akitoka shambani si utamwagiza akuandalie wewe chakula. Pamoja na kwamba yeye katoka shambani wewe ulikuwa nyumbani. Utaambia niandalie chakula. Simama hapo wakati ninakula. Iko hapo. Simama hapo wakati ninakula, nikimaliza kula ndipo na wewe utakapokula. Akasema si ndivyo mnavyofanya. Si ndivyo ilivyo. Anasema ni nani kati yenu atamshukuru yule mtumwa? Anasema basi. Kwa sababu iko hivyo kwa watumwa, kwa watumwa. Vivyo hivyo nanyi mtakapokwisha kuyafanya yote mlioagizwa, semeni sisi tu watumwa wasio na faida, tumefanya tu yaliyotupasa kufanya who can have a heart like this kwamba yale ambayo pasa alinituma kufanya mimi ni mtendakazi asiye na faida nimeyafanya tu yale niliyotumwa kuyafanya nimeyafanya tu yale yaliyo ni sehemu yangu maana yake ministry is a thankless job huduma ni kazi isiyo na shukurani ndio maana kwenye ufunuo tunaambiwa takavyoingia kule siku ile atatupokea na kusema well done that good and faithful servant mwisho kabisa kwenye ufunuo well done thou good and faithful servant bado lile neno servant ukiliangalia neno slave pamoja na kama ni mwana kule ndio tutafutwa machozi anasema kule ndio ambako tutapewa shukurani well done thou good and faithful servant but hawa unao wadai wa kutambue huduma yako yani nataka kanisa ambalo wanatambua huduma yangu ilivyo kubwa kama bado unatafuta kutambuliwa huduma yako ilivyo kubwa you have never known the master wote ni watumwa tuko kwenye shamba la mizabibu tunavuna unasema nataka watu waone ninavyovuna Yaani mtumwa mmoja anasema nataka watu waone jinsi ninavyochuma kile kichana cha zabibu na kukiweka kwenye kikapu jinsi ninavyofanya kwa umahiri I want people to recognize my ability to harvest 
Does it compute? Wanasema the math is not mathing. Si ndio? Hivi kuna mtu anapata concept ya ninachokizungumzia hapa. Ukiwa unaingia kwenye ministry ya aina yoyote ambayo Mungu amekuita kuifanya with the mentality kwamba watu wawe appreciative of your ministry you will fail kwa sababu utakutana na viwango vya unafiki ambavyo kiukweli sio vya dunia hii wala havitakiwi kuwepo utakutana na viwango vya chokochoko halafu kuna watu wengine watataka tu ujue how much they do not appreciate you kwa sababu kuna mtu mwingine unaweza kuwa watu umesimama hapa jaki umepewa kuhubiri unahubiri kuna mtu mwingine just because it is you hata amen hasemi yani anakutizama tu sija akasema amen ukajisifu kwamba eh nimehubiri mpaka fulani amesema amen yani kwa hiyo anakutizama tu anatafuna chewing gum afa anaangalia magari kidogo kule nje yani tu ujue kwamba yani hujaukamata ufahamu wangu kiasi hicho yani kwamba unayozungumza sio kwamba ni mafunuo kivyo na mimi Mungu ni kama alishawahi kunifunulia zamani e, yani kwamba wewe fanya tu hapo umalize funga ibada yani sio kwamba you are not much and you have to look at this person and you have to keep preaching because it's not just for them you have been sent to do a job by the master yeye ndio mwenye ku appreciate kwa sababu in reality he's the only one who knows amekutoa wapi wengine wote do they even know your heart eh moyo wangu mimi hata mke wangu haujui anajua baadhi ya tabia zangu lakini sio moyo anayojua ni Mungu tu kwa yule anayeweza kuku appreciate truly ni yule ambaye anaweza kuku appreciate hata ukiwa naked. Kuna kitu nimeongea. Umeshafuta makeup. Umeshaondoa wig. Umeshaondoa kucha feki za plastiki na makope ya silicon. Umesimama katikati ya chumba katika utukufu wako aka ku appreciate now that's the one and that is god kwa sababu mungu daudi anasema e bwana umenichunguza na kunijua umepepeta kwenda kwangu na kulala kwangu umeelewa na njia zangu zote maana hamna neno ulimini mwangu usilolijua bwana umenichu umenizingira nyuma na mbele ukaniwekea mkono wako niende wapi ni ukimbie uso wako Niende wapi nijiepushe na roho yako. Daudi anamwambia Mungu, you know everything about me. You see. You know everything about me. And yet you love me. You know everything. Na Daudi alikuwa anajua anaongelea nini anavomwambia Mungu kwamba you know everything about me and yet you love me. Kwa sababu Daudi had the issues. Na Mungu akamtizama Daudi together with his issues. Akasema aha, nimemkuta Daudi mtumishi wangu. Nitampaka mafuta ili mkono wangu uwe naye daima. He knew everything about David but yet he loved him. God is the only one who can love you in spite of yourself. Kwa hiyo huyo ndio ambaye he's the only one worthy of true appreciation of who I am. Kwa sababu anani appreciate not because I'm shiny. Anani appreciate not because I'm glowing in glory. Ananikubali sio kwa sababu ninang'aa au nina utukufu fulani au nimeweza sana au ni mchungaji mzuri sana au ni mume mzuri sana au ni baba mzuri sana ananikubali kwa sababu anamjua yule ambaye nyinyi hamumjui. Sasa yeye akiniambia Well done. Believe me. It is well done. Binadamu anakwambia I say, well done. Lakini kesho akijua tuka kitu fulani hata 0.5% 
ya ka darkness fulani ambako kapo kwenye maisha yako hata kuambia tena well done atasema tumuombee mtumishi ana struggle unajua mambo ya utumishi magumu ame wanasema amegafilika au umetekewa kuna mna Kiswahili chenu eh? kutekewa ni nini amegafilika or something ha nie naomba niongee ya kwenu wengi wenu mlioko hapa mnapendana na kukubaliana kwa sababu hamjuani Sara they don't know you hey, my friend Woo. wakijua kwanza text messages zitakata mtu anatafakari yani kwanza kanisa zima litakata kukutumia messages yani kwamba wanatafakari kwanza walichokisikia kwamba how is it possible yani yani how how anapo anapo imbaga vizuri vile yani nini yani nini kinatokea But guess what? God knowing all that and knowing you very well says I love you. Makosa mengi ambayo huwa tunafanya katika maisha yetu pale unapochumbia. Hata vijana wangu huko ukitaka kujua wanaanza kuchumbia wanaanza kuoga. Unakuta mtu anatokea yuko sop sop. E, unakuja kanisani unamsikia kabisa mtu ananukia sabuni kwamba yani katoka kuoga. Nadhani huwa wanaoga fajisuuzi kabisa yani ili ile harufu ya, ya gardenia. Mnatumia gardenia eh? Eh? <laughs> gardenia. Eh? Ije inanukia nukia. Anaanza kuficha yani vitu vya namna fulani. Ukitembelewa nyumbani vyombo unaviweka chini ya kitanda ambapo vijaoshwa unaviweka pembeni ya socks chini ya kitanda yani huku juu kunaonekana katika namna fulani ili mtu akuone unabadilisha namna unaongea unampeleka mtu kwenye restaurant ambazo huendagi in hopes kwamba maybe they will fall in love with the picture you are trying to paint and not with reality and they fall in love with the picture akishaingia ndani huwezi kuwa unatembea umeshika ile picha hivi all the time kuna wakati wa kulala you have to put it down ah unajua mimi mtu, mtu wa mazoezi sana eh, yani nakimbia kilomita kumi, na nyanyua vyuma nafanya nini anaingia wiki ya kwanza hamna chuma mwaka hamna chuma reality inaanza kuonekana now because they fell in love with an idea inside their head an idea of you wanaweza kukufumbilia tu kwa muda fulani because the idea still has power but then the reality becomes overwhelming na upendo wao unaanza kutetereka because now the real you is out and they can see you but to god you were always you You know Mzemushi you can never fake it with God. Hata ukisema mimi nimesamea nimeachilia Mungu tu ana kuangalia anasema my friend. Unasema yani mimi hapa nimeachilia yani mimi vitu havikaagi. Eh yani maji ni kama maji yanateleza kwenye mgongo wa bata yani nimeachilia. Mungu anabonyeza hata kidogo tu hivi pale kwenye kovu. Unapiga makelele anasema mbona akija pona hiki? Unapiga tumesema yani kwamba wewe yani uko gadu uko vizuri. Mbona bado unapiga makelele? Because he knows you. And you know what? Mungu ataruhusu majaribu kwenye the area ambayo iko weak katika maisha yako ili uweze kujua there's a problem there. Ili uweze kupata healing in that area. Hili he's drawing attention to your weakness. Kama this is your weakness, you're too proud. This is your weakness, you cannot forgive. This is your weakness. 
Huwezi kutolerate weaknesses of others. This is your weakness. Kwa hiyo utakuta people are doing the same thing. Kwa wale walio kuepo siku ya wangapi walikuepo siku ya when was it? Jumatano. Jumatano nilisema vita vyetu sio juu ya nyama na damu. We do not wrestle with people at all. But sometimes it's the people you see. Kwa sababu ninamwona huyu. Na huyu ndio ndani kosesha raha. Kwa hiyo lazima huyu ndio adui. Ninamwona huyu. Huyu ndio aliyenisema na nina ushahidi wamenionyesha na messages. Kwa huyu lazima ndio sio mtu mzuri. Lakini anasema hatupigani na nyama na damu at all that means our enemies are not people Tunapigana na falme na mamlaka zinazowatumia binadamu ambao for a moment mioyo yao iko available na kuna baadhi ya milango wameiacha wazi mtu yoyote hata mimi nilia aposo kuna mlango fulani nikiacha wazi nitaweza kutumika kukupatiliza Shetani anamtumia mtu yeyote ambaye yuko available. Yoyote. Even me. Anaweza akanitumia kumnyoosha mke wangu. Anaweza akamtumia mke wangu kuninyoosha. Anaweza akamtumia hata mtoto wako kukunyoosha. So, tunaweza tukamfukuza mtu fulani kanisani kwamba huyu ndio center ya maneno hapa kanisani. Hebu aondoke. Lakini because we have dealt with the person and not the spirit the person will leave halafu akiondoka ile roho iliyokuwa ikimtumia hapa inabaki hapa yeye tu anakuwa ameondoka yuko kule lakini itamtumia mtu mwingine ndio maana unashangaa fulani nilimfukuza lakini huyu naye ameanza kufanya hivyo hakuwa hivi zamani huku huyu nimemtimua lakini huyu mbona ameanza kufanya you are dealing with the superficial it's not about people when they leave that spirit is in operation here it will remain behind alafu itafanya exactly the same thing until you open up your eyes and learn from the master how to deal with a particular spirit ndio maana anasema ah kuna mtu mmoja alienda kupanda shamba usiku akiwa amelala adui akaja akapanda magugu alipopanda magugu wafanyakazi wake wakaja bwana Adui amepanda magugu. Tuamuru twende tukayangoe. What did the master say? Ah uh-uh. ah. Acheni. Acheni magugu na ngano vimee pamoja. Wakati wa mavuno, sasa yale magugu tears. Aliyokuwa akizungumzia Yesu, they are specific in the Middle Eastern region ambako kule staple food ni ngano kuna magugu fulani yanayoitwa tears ambayo yakiwa machanga they look exactly like mea wa ngano umeona problem ilipo ndio maana master akasema mkienda kungoa mtangoa pamoja na ngano kwa sababu at this age yanafanana let them mature ilikuwa yanakuwa pamoja na ngano ngano inavyoanza kubeba ile kale ile ngano yenyewe pale juu kabisa yale ambayo ni magugu hayabebi kale yanatoa maua yanaanza kupendeza wakati wa kuzaa yanaacha kuzaa matunda yanajipendezesha yenyewe haya yield fruit wakati yule wapembeni yake anatoa ngano anatoa chakula anafanya kazi yenyewe ndio wakati wa kupendeza look how i'm shining look how i'm good in the farm angalia ninavyopendezesha shamba lakini mkulima hakuleta kupendezesha anataka chakula ndio maana Yesu akasema kwamba acheni magugu na ngano vyote pamoja tutavitenganisha wakati wa mavuno because right now you cannot recognize kuna mtu mwingine mnamwona ni mtu mbaya mnamwona ni mtu msemaji mnamwona ni mtu msengenyaji lakini actually ni ngano ya kweli kuna kasemu tu anapitia but kabla ya mavuno atakuja kuwa sawa 
mnaweza mkamngoa mkidhani mnangoa gugu kumbe mnaiwai ngano ambayo ilikuwa ni ngano sema haujafika wakati wake wa kukomaa kuna mtu ananielewa anachoongea akasema acheni vyote pamoja wakati tutakuja kufika tutavitambua kipi ni kipi na tutavitenganisha huyu kuingia rahani huyu kwenda kupata yale yanayostahili haleluya Mungu anaita watu ndani ya ili kanisa. Watakaosema vivyo watakaosema sisi ni watumwa wasio na faida. Tumeyafanya yale tu yaliyotupasa kufanya. Mnakumbuka kuna mfano mwingine sita usoma hapa Yesu aliuzungumzia kuhusu mchungaji wa wito na mchungaji wa mshahara. Alisema mchungaji wa wito akimwona dubu anakuja kurarua kondoo anasema anakwenda kupambana na yule dubu. Ha? Lakini alisema mchungaji wa mshahara akimwona dubu anakuja yeye anafanya nini? Anakimbia. Anawaacha kondoo nyuma anajiokoa nafsi yake. Yote alikuwa anazungumzia kuhusu nini? Servanthood kwamba mchungaji wa kweli anajiweka katikati ya mabaya na watu wake pamoja na kwamba hawamlipi kwa sababu oh nimepata mf... thank you jesus nimepata mfano mwingine hapa hapa wewe ukiwa na kondoo wako ukamwajiri mchungaji kijana wa kuwachunga wale kondoo swali wanaomlipa yule mchungaji na kumshukuru kwa kazi njema ni kondoo anaowachunga au ni yule aliyemwajiri kuwachunga kuna kitu mmepata hapo kondoo kama kondoo ni wasumbufu mbuzi kama mbuzi ni wasumbufu mara yule amekimbia kule yule anampiga kichwa mwenzie yule anafanya hiki yule anakula mahindi ya jirani kazi yako we kupiga tu miluzi unakimbia huku unawarudisha wale unapiga miluzi unakimbia huku unawarudisha hawa unafanya hivyo unawaweka kwenye kivuli unawapeleka kwenye maji unafanya hivyo sababu ni wasumbufu ni kazi yao kuwa wasumbufu the same way nyie mmetuendesha na mnatuendesha na mnazidi kutuendesha sisi tulio watumishi wenu mara nyingine namuuliza pasta vipi bwana huduma inaendeleaje anasema alo aposo ila kuna sehemu tunaenda anajijua ananiambia gai anasema tu alo anashusha kwanza pumzi nzito afasema ila baba ni mwema kuna sehemu tunaenda yani kwamba huyu mtu ana, anafanya kila biblia inachosema encourage yourself in the lord ukimuliza <laughs> mtumishi vipi ukaona anasema mungu mwema unajua kuna kitu kizito Haleluya. And that's our job. Wewe ulie mwenyekiti wa vijana. Kiongozi wa worship team. Sisi hatuna maneno ya kukushukuru namna unavyopaswa kushukuriwa. Which means siku moja tukikumbuka tutasema asante. Asante kwa kazi unayofanya kwenye kanisa. Pasta hatuna cha kukushukuru. Siku tukikumbuka tutaita Pastors Day. Tutakusanya kusanya vijela vyetu viji microwave. Mahindi ya bisi ambayo hayajakaangwa. Galoni ya mafuta. Siku tukikumbuka tutakuletea kilo ya sukari. Lakini hatuna shukurani ambayo inapasa na kukidhi kule tunakuwa kupitisha. Ma nyingine kama kondoo tunakimbia kwenye vichaka vya miba you run in after us miba inakuchubua miba inakukwaruza unarudi nyumbani na matope unafika unataka fellowship na mama anakwambia ah mngoja kwanza huko matope yako hayo kwanza kajiweke sawa kwa sababu hiyo i cannot handle all that 
And therefore we cannot tell you thank you enough. Hakuna enough amount of money ambayo tunaweza tukalipa kukuondoa fresh air. Kukuondoa royal oven. Uje utuongoze maombi hapa mwezi mzima. There's no amount of money can cover that. But one day you will hear well done thou good and faithful servant. It's not easy kuwa mke wa mtumishi wa Mungu mwenye wito mgumu kama huu. Wewe ni mama ni mwanamke. Una watoto. You want to see things. You want to see things, you want to see progress. Physical progress. And it's not a bad thing ni kitu ambacho Mungu amedesign na kukiandika ndani ya kila mwanamke to see growth in the family. It cannot be easy. Kuwa mama mchungaji. Kuwa mama mtumishi. Kuwa mama mtumishi. It's not easy. Watumishi sometimes mind zao hazifikiri kama binadamu wa kawaida. They don't they are weird people. They don't walk the earth like other men. But they love you. But they love you differently than maybe how you want to be loved. Unakuta penzi ambalo sishe anakupa ni unique and different. Labda sivyo ulivyotegemea sana. Mlitegemea kwamba kila unaporudi kutoka kazini anakuja kukubeba kwa mgongoni getini, anakuingiza ndani amekubeba. Alafu kila unaporudi anakupa ua. Waridi. Kama mke wangu ili hapa na kibox cha chocolate. Lakini umekuja kukutana na ile kwamba ah umerudi. Bona sikusikia wakati tunafungua gate. Haya. Watoto hebu check kama watoto wamekula. Kama jamani this is not romantic. Well, it is. Receive it the way it is. Tunakwenda Mungu anatufundisha jinsi ya kupenda, jinsi ya kupenda wake zetu. Mungu anawafundisha jinsi ya kupenda waume zetu. Nimekuja kugundua kwamba darasa is one Yani maisha is one long darasa. We learn new things every day. Lakini we have patience. We have patience kwamba one day that thing ambayo we've been waiting for for such a long time will come to happen. Una wazee unawaona. Mimi wakati mzee wangu anafariki alikuwa wametoka ku celebrate miaka na moja ya ndoa na mama. But it wasn't always easy. Kuna kipindi wakati niko mdogo nilikuwa naweza nikaona wamekwaro labda wanafokeana kuna siku nimemwona kabisa mama yangu amebeba kibegi. Amebeba begi, ametoka nje mimi narudi kwetu. Kipindi hicho kwao kulikuwa bado kupo. Sababu alikuwa bado yufu. <laughs> Ameshika kibegi kabisa mimi narudi kwetu. Baba amekaa kule ndani sasa rudi. Mama akatoka ametoka kidogo baba akasimama kaanza anatembea tembea mle sebleni anatembea tembea akasimama tu ah ah mameno ametoka akasema ndio yule anakwenda ametoka ye. akasema tu ah leta funguo za za za, za Land Rover akapewa funguo akamfuata akaendesha mpaka pale mama alipo akapaki kwa mbele yake akamblock akapaki kwa mbele yake akashuka akajieleza we akaeleza sababu zake kuzaliwa sababu zake kuishi tokea yuko mdogo mpaka sasa amekunywa lita ngapi za maziwa akaeleza akaeleza nikaona mama amechukua begi lake akatumbukiza kwenye wanteni wanteni kageuka ikarudi nyumbani and things were fine lakini that was a long time baadaye wanakuja ku ku celebrate 51 years of marriage kila mtu anasema i want that 51 years how did you do it i want that no you don't you never saw the years in the middle you never saw the shaping the pain the tears the getting used to each other's differences hapo mtoto wao wa mwisho 
ambaye amezaliwa 1975 ni mtu naye ni mtu mzima mama kabeba mabegi Life is a classroom. Lakini like today I can stand here and say wale watu walikuwa ni soulmate. Whatever small differences mtakutana nazo in life. Rise above them. The person you have is worth more than maudhi madogo madogo wanayokusababishia. Tuko pamoja? Mnanisikia? Kwa nini nimezungumza hiyo? Kwa sababu ninazungumza kuhusu being a servant. Even in marriage, you must learn to serve your wife and you must learn to serve your husband. And you must learn to serve each other in the church. And you must learn to serve God. Serving is all we do, whether in ministry, in marriage, as a parent, as mchungaji, as kijana tu au dada uliopo kanisani. You are a servant of the most high God. You were brought here to serve. Sisi kama waumini tulioko hapa. We will serve you. Sababu wewe ni mchungaji wewe ni baba. Lakini there's a way also God has called you to serve us. For the same reason that amekuvika ubaba. Hallelujah. Mchana wa leo tunavyoondoka hapa. Utoke kwenye mlango huo ukijua kwamba ni mtumishi anatoka. Ni servant anatoka. Go serve the people that God has given you in your life. Whether ni kazini, whether ni kwenye biashara, shuleni, kwenye familia, other Christians, CO2 wa NTM, wako kote kule mradi ni Mkristo unayekutana naye. Hebu mtumikie. Haleluya. Katika kutumikiana utamnunulia mtu shati. Utamnunulia mtu socks, utamnunulia mtu suruali, utamnunulia mtu chungwa. Utampenda tu mtu. Utamkumbuka, utamjulia hali. I said nimesija kuona mingi. Unaendelea. Mambo gani yanaendelea katika maisha yako? Is there anything in particular you want me to pray for? For you. When we learn to lift each other up, hili kanisa litapata nguvu. Hallelujah. Kila mmoja aheshimiwe kwa sehemu Mungu amemweka. Yule binti mdogo kabisa yuko pale ambaye amevaa beji imeandikwa Asha. Anapokuja anakwambia, "Njo ukae siti ya mbele, mtumikie yule binti kwa kumtii anachosema." Serve her by obeying what she says. Obeying her commands. Servanthood in every area of your life. And then you will begin to see the blessings of God open up in your life. In their own time. Katika wakati wake wenyewe. Hallelujah. Wangapi wamepata kitu katika haya machache ambayo nimeyaongea? Mungu awabariki sana. God has called you to be a servant. God has called me to be a servant. And I will serve you whether you like me or not. Whether you appreciate what I do and how I do it or not. My calling is to serve you with love and not to expect anything in return from you. If you give me anything, I will say thank you. God bless you. God increase you. I will say that. But I will not work for you because I expect something. Sita kutumikia kwa sababu kuna kitu nategemea. Kuna mtu anaelewa ninachoongea. Wewe ni mtumishi kabisa. Ukimwangalia huyo wa kulia kwako na kushoto kwako, huyo ni mtumishi kabisa. Anasema msidaiwe na mtu kitu isipokuwa kupendana. Nyie mlioko huko ndani, kila aliyokaa kulia kwako na kushoto kwako, unamdai upendo. Hilo ndio deni ambalo halitakuja kufutika until they die. They owe you something. They owe you their loyalty. They owe you their love. They owe you uh, their warmth. Hallelujah. 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 Mungu awabariki sana. Karibu mchungaji.